Hello there, guys. It's Christmas season. As you may know, fly fishing season has ended. Let's bake something instead. First, I have to dress up for the occasion. So, hello guys, and welcome to another episode. So today we are going to be making some gingerbread, on in style. That's the best I could think of, so... As you can see, we have all our ingredients. Powdered sugar, flour, some honey, butter, cinnamon, and some sodium bicarbonate. So there are specific instructions for each ingredient. Let's get to it. So for the quantities, I have a cheat sheet. So this is... The first instruction is to work the ingredients thoroughly together. So let's begin. The beer. What about the beer? <sighs> okay, so this is gonna be our bowl. That's a nice bowl. All this stuff are in mine. We're gonna have to tidy up the place. You might be wondering that, man, all these hexes live together. I mean, new stuff. If I jokes on you, this is not our kitchen. Okay. We shall begin. By my logic, we should add in the powder ingredients first. So first comes the flour. Then comes the powdered sugar. I had to grind this down myself. Walking around the Christmas tree. What I like to do is give it some some tossing to shape the ingredients together. Then comes the sodium bicarbonate. <coughs> then the cinnamon. Finely ground. I like to give it a firm slap, but it doesn't want to come out. Then uh, let me just check my... Yeah. The honey and the butter has to be... I mean the honey has to be lukewarm. The butter has to be melted all the way or... Okay. What I like to do is uh, stand in front of the operating microwave. The, the instruction says that the honey should be lukewarm. Let me test that real quick. And that's... I mean, you can consider that lukewarm. First we add the butter. Then comes the honey. That's some lukewarm honey. And I hope they don't get too cold while I'm cracking the eggs. Speaking of honey, today's sponsor is that we don't have sponsors, so. Okay, then comes the eggs. Five of them. It's our coffee. It's cool season right now, so also I have to be quiet because both our kids are sleeping right now. The 
is R E. Okay, I'm gonna need to pull up my sleeves and let's get into it. You should always leave your other hand empty. Come on. I don't think it's wet enough. How am I gonna get it off my hands? My wife says that I should just scrape it off with a spoon. And what am I gonna scrape off the spoon with? Another spoon. This reminds me of something. Having two toddlers. But I'm not gonna tell you what this reminds me of. Should I put flour on my hands? Yeah. <laughs> it needs some more flour. needs two hands. I may stick to tying flies. This is some tuckering work. I can lift the ball. <laughs> so I think we are done with mixing. Let it rest for half an hour in the fridge. So I'm gonna scrape off everything from my hands and gonna let it rest for, for uh, half an hour in the fridge. Meanwhile, if I did another video, I'm gonna put it over here. So, see you in half an hour so that half an hour turned out to be more like six but the kids are asleep so let's continue Smells nice. So the next step is stretching it one to two centimeters thin and then cutting the shapes. We talked this through with my wife. I really should use more flour to avoid it sticking everywhere. So first I'm gonna wash my hands, then I'm gonna take a sip of my and then flour up the Cutting more. Look at those moves. Ah, yeah. Pull up my sleeves. Wow, <laughs> it is hard enough quite a bit. I assume I have to add some more flour. Yes, I was right. I think we are done here. So we have our... What's the name of this? Here we go, pa. Kneading bar. I don't know. You should use this too. <laughs> ah, just look at that. I can already feel the Christmas spirit uniformly. We should reach the desired thickness. A good rule of thumb 
is to look at your pinky. Your pinky is usually almost two centimeters wide. Should we measure it? Your pinky is Since we are a fishing channel, I will use these custom ones. I don't know if you can see them. They are trout shaped, two different sizes. These are the prototypes. So, funny story, I wanted to do cookies shaped in the shape of my logo, but turns out doing new shaped cookies is not a good idea since they have really thin parts. So, we ended up with trout shapes that needed a little engineering. These are made of PMMA that's used for uh, 3D printed dental models. I don't know if it's food grade, but hey, it touches your tooth before it's cemented in, so not to leave out the logo idea. One in the shape of my logo. Here we are. Let's see what we can make out of them. Stay there. 
PBS and our scissors. You roll it back and you place your cookies on it. Bruh. So we are all done, all we have to do now is to place them in the oven at 175 degrees Celsius, safety first. I put it in gently, just as gently as you should at the subscribe button. Now we wait. And there you have it. It's the next day. These sprouts turned out to be a little chubby but let's decorate them and since they are brown I thought it would be appropriate to make some brown trouts and since we have varied color icing we can make some rainbow trouts too and we are going to make some with my logo this one turned out nice we have some sugar pearls for the eyes. Let's start with the brown trout. A nice brown trout. That's your rainbow trout. Hey honey, your head. That's very nice. <laughs> So it's time to try them. I'm going to try the rainbow trout, the literal rainbow trout. I have some lactose-free milk over here because we are not tolerating lactose in our lives anymore. It tastes like gingerbread. It's a bit dry, it doesn't taste like fish at all, but that's a good recipe if you want to try it. So, if you like the video, 
please like, share and subscribe. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Bye bye.